Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation to take a look at another premium ship in World of Warships Legends. The subject of our video today is the Tier 5 Italian premium ship, Leone. For this review, I'll start with some history, move into analysis, run down the stats with you, and then we'll finish off with some gameplay. If you do want to skip around at all, I have left some time codes for you down in the description. The RN Leone was the lead ship in a class of three scout cruisers, built for the Regia Marina, referred to as Esploratori in Italian. While scout cruisers weren't exactly unheard of as a concept, a good example being the Omaha cruisers of the United States Navy, this would have been a very large destroyer for the 1920s. The actual size of this ship is actually very similar to a Fletcher class destroyer. As for when this was built, the Leone was ordered in 1917, but due to material shortages, as a reminder World War I was going on at that point, construction did not begin until November 1921. She launched in October 1923 and was commissioned into the Regia Marina in July 1924. Though initially intended to be a class of five ships, only three were built, the Leone, the Pantera, and the Tigre, which means Lion, Panther, and Tiger, respectively. After seven years of routine service, she was put in for modernization in 1931. It was at this point that her original complement of two times three 450 millimeter launchers were replaced with two times two 533 millimeter torpedo tubes. Five years later, in 1936, she was updated again before being sent to Eritrea at that point a colony of Italy. At this time, she would have ostensibly been protecting Italy's interests in the region as the Italians waged a campaign of expansion into Ethiopia. The purpose of this conflict was largely to help Mussolini politically back home. In any case, as Ethiopia is a landlocked country, it's not surprising that I didn't find much in the way of operations during this time. As it turned out, 1938 would be a slightly more interesting time for the Leone, as she suffered a fire in her ammunition compartment, which had to be flooded, lest the ship go boom. And completely unrelated, this was also the time when the Leone's designation was changed from a cruiser to a destroyer. She was in Eritrea at the beginning of World War II, and as the British controlled the Suez Canal, she was actually effectively cut off from Italy. Curiously, this would limit the operational area of the Leone and her sister ships to the Red Sea, a theater of war not often talked about. Her services included coming to the aid of two Italian submarines, the Perla and Archimedes, on separate occasions, though on each occasion the submarine's crew were being poisoned by methyl chloride, a gas that was used as a refrigerant and probably part of the submarine's air conditioning unit. As say what you like about Italian designs, most of them did have air conditioning, including the Leone. On at least four other occasions, she sortied out against British convoys, and in three of the four sorties against the British, she came back empty-handed. The only time that she did engage a convoy was Convoy BN-7. In this particular conflict, the Italian destroyers were forced to disengage as they were outnumbered and dangerously outgunned thanks to the presence of HMNZS Leander, which is the same Leander you are thinking about in the game after she was transferred to New Zealand service. Seeing the end of the road for Italian-held Eritrea, the Italians decided to send whatever ships that might be able to reach a friendly port to those ports. The remainder, basically the destroyer squadrons three and five, which each comprised of three ships, went on a suicide mission to try to do what they could to Suez and Port Said. Sadly for Leone, she hit an uncharted reef along the way, which ripped open her hull. The ship immediately began taking on more water than it could pump out. Though the Leone was doomed, the ship was evacuated and her sister ship, the Pantera, sent her to the bottom with a little extra gunfire. Thus ended Leone's service on April 1st, 1941. As for the rest of the ships of the class, the two remaining sisters continued their dash towards Suez, only to be attacked by British aircraft. Damaged, both the Pantera and Tigre made for the shores of Arabia, where they scuttled both ships on the night of April 3rd to April 4th. 
The Leone in World of Warships Legends is a weird boat. My initial thoughts on the ship was probably like everyone. How much of a meme ship could this be? That is, a ship that's fun to play for the absurdity of it, rather than it being a really effective boat. With the small number of torpedoes that can reload quickly, you're kind of thinking maybe this can be like a big Italian Smith, but the torpedo reload isn't really fast enough to do that, so it really can't get there. Then you think maybe this could be a decent gunboat. After all, it does have eight guns, and uh, that basically doesn't work either. If you're looking for advantages of this ship, this ship has eight guns, and provided you can use them while ducking and weaving between smoke and island cover, they do have a large alpha strike potential against other destroyers. With 11 kilometer torpedo range, it's also pretty easy to fire these from the cover of stealth. And you'll get plenty of opportunities to fire torpedoes because your torpedo launchers actually reload pretty quickly. Unfortunately, everything else about these guns and torpedoes makes them hard to use effectively. This means that you have long reloads on your main battery and your guns are really hard to shoot forward though you do have much better angles while moving away. Your torpedoes are pretty close to the slowest in the game, and you can't put too many of them out there at once. Then there's basically a laundry list of other things that individually aren't huge items, but definitely add up to make this ship pretty much a head scratcher at this point. So moving right along to stats, we'll look at some of those things. There's not really a good ship to compare this to, so for the most part, I'll just try to get you a good feel for what this ship can do. And as always, the stats you see here on screen are unmodified with the exception of concealment, which includes the camouflage that comes on the ship. For survivability, the Leone surprisingly comes in a bit below average for Destroyer at Tier 5. Not a lot, just 400 hit points, but this is surprising, not only because she was a cruiser, she's also a bit on the large side. Nothing I've seen makes me think the size plays any part in how they rate survivability, but it stands to reason that the bigger the target, the easier it is to hit. In any case, the armor scheme offers no real surprises here, 16 millimeters on the hull, and 6 millimeters on the superstructure. That's pretty standard destroyer armor, at least at tier 5. Uh, basically, every battleship will overmatch you, and anything else will probably shoot HE at you, and this ship will eat all the damage, like pretty much every other destroyer. In artillery, the Leone comes in with an impressive number of guns, a total of 8, which is the joint highest of any destroyer in the game right now. They're arranged in 4 turrets with 2 guns each, these shoot out to exactly the average 10.5 kilometers. However, their reload time is what I can only assume is five seconds worth of siesta, followed by the legitimate four and a half seconds it would probably take to reload the gun. Unless this was two part ammunition, in which case that would make sense, but I'm too lazy to look it up. The slow reload speed basically means you have below average damage per minute with HE and AP, and you're also a bit low on the fire chance. That's also why I mentioned using smoke and islands specifically to your advantage, because open water trades don't go all that well for you if you have to wait nine and a half seconds between shots. On the other hand, the large number of guns does mean that if you can keep your guns singing, increasing your fire chance will pay larger dividends than you'll get on most other ships. But you should be warned that the turret angles on this are really not great basically very limited forward very good to the rear which actually makes a crazy amount of sense for a scout ship and you'll have to be reasonably broadside to get all of your guns onto any one target your 18 second turret traverse here is nothing special but it is about three seconds faster than average when we come to torpedoes this is actually where you would expect that the leona would actually shine the one thing that is really exceptional here is your 11 kilometer range and you might argue that having a 47 second reload is really good. It is actually clearly the fastest that you'll get at the tier. The thing is you do come in with just half the number of torpedoes that the average ship has at this tier, and they don't quite reload twice as fast. So you're actually hurting a little bit in terms of your overall torpedo potential on top of the fact that these are just about the slowest torpedoes in the game, and they actually do less damage than every other type of torpedo at tier 5 other than some torpedoes that you'll find on American destroyers. 
There may be some differing opinions on whether or not this is a good trade, but I would say overall, since the Leone has the second lowest torpedo DPM of any ship at tier five, that it really doesn't add up to me. As we come to anti-aircraft, it's important to understand that destroyers at this tier tend to have bad AA. The Leone definitely fits in with that. In fact, you're basically the Chad of not having AA defense. The one bright spot here is that the range is so bad that at least it isn't going to give away your position because your AA is unlikely to put many planes in the drink or otherwise persuade a carrier that he best leave you alone. Coming next to maneuverability, your light cruiser routes are really showing here because you are the slowest destroyer at the tier. At just 34 knots, this is basically the most painful part about this destroyer's maneuverability because you're going to be the slowest destroyer in probably every game that you play and in the kind of territory where there are going to be several cruisers in every game that can run you down. Your 620 meter turning circle and 3.4 second rudder shift is close enough to average to say that they are probably average, so we'll just leave it at that. Finally, when we come to concealment, for whatever reason, you actually have concealment that is ever so slightly better than average. This is 100 meters on base C detectability and 200 meters while firing from smoke. Otherwise, all the numbers that you see here are pretty unexceptional. For consumables, nothing really surprising here. The Leone gets a pretty standard smoke screen and an engine boost combination. The only thing I will point out is that this is your normal sort of smoke and not the crawling smoke in case you're wondering. Again, this is not the type of smoke that Italian cruisers get. So as we jump into some gameplay, we're going to be on straight. And first things first, I will put my commander up on the screen. This is obviously going to be Enigo Campioni because he's really the only Italian commander that has any destroyer abilities right now. I did look at the others. I even squinted really hard and turned my head to the side and none of the other options really made a lot of sense. The unfortunate thing is that Campioni is a pretty awesome cruiser commander, one of my favorites. What Campioni does for this ship is barely passable. So if I were looking to purchase this ship, that would probably weigh pretty heavy against that sort of purchase because I'd have to sacrifice how I like to run Italian cruisers, which are incidentally more fun to play, or run this ship with a commander that makes even less sense than this base commander. So as far as what you're going to need to do in this ship, what you're going to see here is some pretty standard workhorse DD play. Uh, if you do go out there thinking, I'm going to play this like a meme ship, I'm going to spam torpedoes into this area and hope that that carries you all the way through the game. You're probably just going to have bad games in this ship because it, it usually doesn't work. Uh, unless you're psychic, in which case you knew I was going to say this, so it doesn't really offend you. So workhorse DD play. Uh, in this case, what I mean by that is taking bases, exploiting opportunities, and not getting too hung up with the idea that you can launch torpedoes every 44 seconds if you have this all the way upgraded. So anyway, what we're doing is we're poking about in the middle. What we don't want is a destroyer to run through the very middle of the map on us. Uh, we have a pretty good idea that that usually ends poorly. So we're more or less occupying this space. Uh, obviously that Alba looked like it was kind of headed towards the island and may in fact hit it. This is a situation where if you have a bad shot on a ship, you might as well take it most of the time because there you can hear right there. Uh, we already have our torpedoes back. That is one of the nice things about this. The thing is, I'm not entirely sure that it makes a lot of sense because I would, I would rather have torpedoes that do more damage, uh, that have a little bit less range, but are at least fast enough that it's easier to aim them. I like slow torpedoes for certain things. 
I, I'm not sure I like them on a destroyer. Uh, in any case, it looks like the Alba did end up hitting that island. We're going to go ahead and put some more torpedoes out there. As you can see, following the line is kind of... I mean, it's a choice you can make. But unless they're really, really going to be driving in the same direction for a long, long period of time... Trying to think a few steps ahead of that is pretty much where you need to be. Uh, so that Alba is probably going to slow down and start moving forward. So I put the torpedoes a little bit in front of where the line was in hopes that he would eventually move into them. Now, I was only thinking apparently two or three steps ahead. I needed to be more like four or five because these torpedoes are just that slow. Uh, we go ahead and open fire with our main battery. Uh, you can see I switched there to AP just because I was curious if I could actually pen him. Uh, a lot of this stuff is still experimental in many cases, uh, but he hits the island, continues to burn, and we end up with a kill. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we've also lost a buddy. And at this point, we are sailing into the enemy's starting cap. Now that California is forever away from us. You can see that it's telling me that the effective range that I need in order to fire a torpedo is 8.1 kilometers. It's that number just below the surprising 56 seconds that it's going to take for the torpedoes to get there. Uh, so this is where you can really do some damage to your personal stats in terms of torpedo hit percentages. Now most people don't have a torpedo hit percentage above 10, so the closer yours gets to zero, I guess it doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, once again, I am trying to figure out where the California is going to go. I assume that he's turning wide enough that those will probably be more in front of him than, than they appear to be otherwise. But obviously, again, we're looking at a full minute before they get there. Uh, so it's a little bit of a guessing game. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a little bit of his attention here. Now, the Leona is not a particularly good fire starter uh, due to the slow rate of fire. We can only put so many shells out there so quickly, and uh, they have a relatively low fire chance individually. Now you can see we have, uh, again, missed with our torpedoes and at least the nine and a half second reload on these guns gives us plenty of time to line up another shot with our guns. Uh, this is just about the best angle that you can get uh, while driving broadside and being able to shoot forward. I may be able to turn just a little bit more, but the superstructure pretty quickly gets in the way, uh, as you can kind of see as we're looking around there. This California is not taking me too seriously and I can hardly blame him, uh, but I'm sure it, it's a source of minor continued annoyance. We'll go ahead and start up our smoke screen, uh, put some wide guesses out there as he threads the needle between the narrow spread I shot at him earlier. Uh, wasn't really threading the needle if you could drive a California through it. So we continue to blaze away with our guns. Uh, obviously, we're just getting a little bit of chip damage here over time. Uh, we are helping. If he had turned around and started shooting at us, we would have been helping also uh, because we would probably stop shooting at that point and let him waste his time to to kind of get us in his aim. But 
We do end up finally hitting something else with torpedoes. Since these are going to reload well before I get there, I'm going to go ahead and put some predictive torpedoes out there on the other side of that island, uh, assuming that they kind of drive around and maybe slow down. I, I feel like a lot of a lot of times when you're using this this ship and trying to aim those torpedoes, what you're doing is uh, basically trying to play a big game of what would I do. Um, this probably works better if you're not insane. But uh, at this point, this is kind of like the area denial idea as well. Um, we're putting torpedoes where we think the boats are probably going to end up. Or in, in places where we think it would be a good idea for them to end up. Uh, and then shooting our torpedoes there, and then hopefully they do or don't drive into them. Well, there you go. Nothing but skill on uh, those two torpedo hits. Uh, we managed to finish off the cruiser, and we're still holding on to these points. Uh, obviously, my purpose at this point is to make sure he doesn't cap the base. Straight is kind of an unfortunate map to play on because uh, it counts points up so quickly so what I'm doing isn't necessarily a bad idea because as you can see they can still kill off the people on my team so we were just about to win a second ago now it's getting a little bit closer you can see just how far out the white line gets when you have a ship that's sailing just straight uh, from one side to the other, even if it's super slow. Obviously, you don't need to worry too much about AP shots, uh, particularly from battleships when they're far away. They will go right through you. QE should probably be shooting HE at me at that point, but uh, whatever. We go on to win the game. Closing thoughts on Leone. I guess if you're Italian, I can come up with one reason why you might want to purchase this ship. Uh, if you're really, really into doing silly things, like trying to get a close quarters medal in an Orcon or Cossack, then I can probably give you another reason why you might want to try this ship. I guess if you like to listen to Pizza Time, particularly when played on a kazoo, uh, then that might be two reasons right there. Otherwise, I'd say this is more of a collector ship. It's something that I think Wargaming can easily justify putting in a box and giving away in the future because it's not really going to change the meta no matter how many of these things are out there. If you're looking for a good premium tier 5 destroyer, I would recommend literally any ship other than this because until this gets a commander that can kind of push this more convincingly in the direction of being a decent gunboat or a decent torpedo boat, I just don't understand this ship. With what we have in the game right now, uh, this ship feels metaphorically rudderless. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Leone. I hope you have enjoyed this review and I'll see you on the next one.